Hello everyone, this is Akaim and welcome back to some more World of Warships and today we are taking out the tier 9 German destroyer, the Z46 and I really have to say I like the Z46 and unfortunately we are playing on Tears of the Desert, one of the more disliked maps of World of Warships, playing Domination. We have a Kerfus, Yamada, Missouri, Ismo, North Carolina, Minotaur, Moskva, Charles Mattel, Gearing, Hopadosh, Fletcher, and a Z46. On the enemy team, there is a Kerfus, Yamato, Missouri, Lion, Bismarck, Minotaur, Hindenburg, St. Louis, Ibuki, Z52, Shimikaze, and Fletcher. So unfortunately, we, we are going to be at bottom tier. But overall, I will have to say the C46 can hold their own, uh, especially against higher tiers, especially against uh, Russian destroyers. Close range, you can melt a Russian destroyer pretty quick, as long as you're not being spotted, obviously. But anyways, we are going to push towards B. And one little side note is I... I'm running a bit late. I'm actually trying to get this quickly recorded before uh, my brother gets home so we can make supper and relax. So I'm going to quickly try to get this all taken care of because, well, I was in fact getting uh, tomorrow's new Let's Play started. Or better yet, get the everything in check and in gear to where it will be coming out smoothly. Uh, but we'll see how things will progress. Anyways, we are starting to push B, and it looks like the gearing has changed its mind from going to the A cap, and now is pushing towards B, and obviously there is a enemy destroyer in B, and this is one nice thing about the Z-46, is the fact whenever you are facing off against other destroyers trying to cap, the German destroyers have definitely a huge benefit or any other destroyers, and that is due to the fact of the Hydro. Now, the Z-46 Hydro is the same as our other cruisers' Hydro, so it's not the German Hydro uh, that you will get at the Z-52, but there is the enemy Shimikaze, and almost instantly, we're going to go ahead and pop our own smoke, and it looks like the Shimikaze is starting to pull away and pop the zone, and that's kind of a go figure because the gearing was there as well so detection is pretty decent 5.9 and with that you can actually face off against other tier 10 destroyers of the usn and japanese variety due to the fact that they have also 5.9 now against other tier 9 destroyers the usn and the ign destroyers have a better detection than you do so you do have to be aware whenever facing off against yugamos and fletchers that they will spot you before you will spot them so now the shimikaze obviously has decided to uh, run away uh, due to the fact that he is not being spotted by our hydro and we are officially taking control of this cap once and for all but there is a enemy cur first, and there are those torpedoes incoming as well. There is a enemy cur first uh, coming around this island, and keep an eye on this cur first. Yeah, uh, I don't really know about this cur first that much. But this Shimikaze, coming back to the Shimikaze, he is going to be our nemesis. We're going to see him quite a few times uh, in this battle. So the enemy team has fully taken C, almost with zero contest. Uh, Havrosh is pulling away with our Minotaur. And there is the enemy Shimikaze finally spotted. And now we can go to town. The AP is pretty decent. Uh, you will get uh, quite a bit over pens, but for the most part, your penetration's pretty decent since you are firing a much smaller, or smaller caliber guns uh but unfortunately we have strayed very close to a enemy bismarck and his secondaries have opened up so whenever you do have a destroyer that decides to turn away switching over to he is a good choice but your he is well it's less to be desired let's just say that much uh so at the moment there's not really much we can be doing and this is kind of how the z46 is uh it's supposed to be a mixed bag the AP is its obviously bread and butter, but its torpedoes are decent. Um, they're hit and miss. I, I will say this much. I'm going to quickly show you guys a clip of a Montana taking seven torpedoes and tell me what you think. Nebel 
So, yes, uh, the torpedoes, they're pretty much underpowered. Uh, max damage on the torpedoes is about 14,000 versus the Fletcher at about 19,000. And I believe the Yugamo is also within that range of the Fletcher as well. So, torpedoes are very, very lackluster. But the nice thing about them is that they do go about 66 knots. They do have a 10 kilometer range and they reload every 68 seconds, which is pretty darn good compared to the Fletchers at 140 seconds. Something like that. Actually, I think it's about a minute and 40. Um, so, yeah, yeah, the torpedoes reload very, very quickly. And if you run Adrenaline Rush, they reload even more quickly whenever you take damage. So it's definitely a fun thing to run around and drop these torpedoes that reload so very quickly. Because most times you can actually drop another salvo of torpedoes when your first set is still on its way to target. So that's, that's a fantastic thing about the Adrenaline Rush and the German Destroyers. But once again... The damage is lackluster, and you only have 8 torpedoes versus, say, the Fletcher's 10 uh, torpedo spreads. So, yeah, definitely definitely could be better, but at this moment, it's kind of chilled right now. This is kind of the unfortunate thing, but, hell, hey, there is the enemy Shimikaze, and I'm going to go ahead and actually try to turn to starboard, get my guns all turned on him. And this is the beautiful thing about the German destroyers is the fact that we have hydro and we have our smoke available. And this German this this Japanese destroyer just does not have good luck with us because he keeps running into us. But whenever showing broadside, look at that four and a half k damage, and he has dropped his own torpedoes. And unfortunately, the Mosfa takes our kill. Well, crud. Oh well. At least we took out the enemy Shigmakaze once and for all. No longer going to have him around. And now our team is officially in the lead in ships. But we are definitely behind in points and cap. The enemy team have both A and C and are currently pushing towards B. The enemy Kerfers, once again this Kerfers, I don't exactly uh, know what he was thinking when he was playing this game but he's he's taking a sweet time he's not currently being spotted so it is very very plausible that uh well i don't want to insinuate anything so i'm not going to all right kerfers is finally spotted and let's see would like to drop torpedoes and our torpedoes are once again reloaded see this is one one nice thing about the Z-46 and the German destroyers is that very fast reload. I know that I say this time and time again, uh, but that nice reload makes, well, pretty much dropping torps that much more exciting. Now, as the plane does fly overhead, you do have to be well aware that the Z-46 has kind of terrible uh, air, or airplane detection. Air detection. So... Do be extremely careful whenever you are dealing with uh, any planes nearby because the detection is around three and a half kilometers. Now, unfortunately for us, the Kerfers is deciding to reverse back. I, once, once again, I don't understand uh, exactly what his thinking was, uh, but I did open up hoping that he would start pulling forward and run into the torpedoes. But unfortunately, that is just not going to be the case. And unfortunately for us, he is going to survive for a little bit longer while he decides to hide behind an island. So the enemy team is starting to push towards the A cap. There is a friendly Kerfers that is going balls to the walls towards the enemy Yamato. And yeah, don't exactly know why. Um... Well, unfortunately for us, we're going to lose a tier 10 uh, battleship here very, very quickly. Now, as you can see, there were torpedoes incoming from the south by that North Carolina. Uh, those are from the Z-52 that has made his way all the way back behind our spawn and is currently trying to uh, torpedo anyone that gets near. Now, we did have a little bit of lag spike, but... There is a enemy Minotaur hiding in that smoke screen. Let's 
see if we can get a good drop on him. Now this should be a red flag if you are in a Minotaur and all of a sudden you see that your cap is no longer capping. Should be very, very concerned and this Yamato is actually doing a really good job. Just took out both our Kerr first and our North Carolina and is not quite done. It looks like he might start pulling forward but we'll see how things go. Torpedoes are along the way and eh, let's pop our own smoke now the smoke is kind of lackluster to say the very least definitely not the thing i would rely on the best but we do get our very first kill and that is against the enemy minotaur decided to sit in his own smoke screen a extremely dangerous uh thing to do now whenever facing off against say battleships your AP does actually a fairly substantial amount of damage. Uh, at this range, it is more coming from the air uh, plummeting down. And you can see we're racking up about 2.9k two damage. So overall, not too bad. Um, nice thing about the guns is they reload every 4 seconds. And can chip away a enemy battleship's health even a cruiser's health very very quickly there you saw we almost got 4k damage right there uh really comes down to hitting kind of center line uh right below the superstructure and even the superstructure itself uh due to the fact that your ap is of smaller caliber but unfortunately for us uh the enemy yamato is going to pull away uh and make his his quick escape from our torpedoes so that is unfortunate but the enemy team is starting to push us back into our spawn and this should be a very good time to start capping uh b is quite wide open there is a gearing around though uh so that might make might be the reason why this curfers is hesitant about pushing out but it looks like he finally does well that's good so at the moment, the very beginning of this map has been fairly slow. We've had a few exciting uh, times with the enemy Shimakaze, but it's it's going to get a little bit more exciting. We're going to have a little bit more fun. Yamato and the enemy of Missouri is starting to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Let's see who will win. Well, you probably already know the answer. Honestly, a low-health Montana. Low-health. Low health Yamato versus almost a full health Missouri. Yeah, yeah, that happens. All right, so Yamato is finally killed off. Uh, there is still the Kerfer, Hindenburg, Missouri, Lion, and Fletcher still alive on the enemy team. And it looks like the Kerfers, who I think actually took torpedoes from possibly the gearing, uh, is starting to push out because last time we looked at him, he, he was fairly full health. Hmm. Alright, so got to be careful about the Kerfers. Kerfers does have the German Hydro, and if he has that on, I can't get terribly close to him. Or better yet, my torpedoes can't get white as close as I would like, but we're going to try our luck. Let's see, let's see if we can finish this Kerfers off that has been very, very chilled about pushing out, which not a big fan of seeing a German uh, battleship being this chilled about this battle. Honestly, the German battleships with their good secondaries and large health pool should definitely be tanking the damage, but he's just taking his sweet time. All right, so enemy team have just lost their Z-52. Mosfa finally tracked him down, and there is... Well, there's a enemy Missouri that has shown us a broadside, and torpedoes I think are good. And just watch, just watch how much damage we can rack up against this Missouri. There we go. Took out the enemy Kerr first. Let's see if we can get a double strike. That would be fantastic, but I don't think we're gonna be quite that lucky. Doing significant amount of damage against this Missouri. He has no choice in the matter. It's either show broadside to the Ismo or show 
broadside to us, and obviously we are a much better choice, but hey, we get the kill on the enemy's Missouri, and all that stuff on the enemy team is the Lion and the Fletcher and the Hindenburg, who is all the way up north. And honestly, not providing that much assistance to his team. So we're going to quickly try to see if we can get another kill. That would be pretty fantastic. Now, we've talked about the guns. The speed on the Z46, she is actually quite quick. As you can see, we're breaking about 40 knots. I do run the speed flag as well as, obviously, I'm running the engine boost. Uh, so speed is pretty decent. Turning is kind of lackluster uh, due to the fact that she's kind of a big ship. She does seem to eat AP shells uh, quite heavily. I think it's high time to say hello to this enemy Fletcher and uh, pop our own smoke and just disappear while he essentially is going to be... Uh, seen by everyone and let's see if we can take mounts we do have some friendly ships coming up and we are having some lag issues as you see uh the shells somehow disappearing into that but look at that 5.7k damage and yeah unfortunately got our kill stolen once again from us but overall not too bad took out the enemy fletcher do have to be careful uh, about those torpedoes. So this is going to be it for this replay. Let's take a look at the victory screen. So our team earned a victory. We brought home 540,361 silver, 13,608 XP, 2,384 free XP. We did 109,025 points of damage, 145 shell hits, 5 torpedo hit, 3 kills, 4 flooding, 5 defended base caps, and 2 captured base. We were top of the team with base XP of 2,555. We did around 29,000 damage against the Kerfers around 21,000 against the Minotaur, around 14,000 against the Missouri, and around 21,000 against the enemy Yamato. So overall, not too bad. Our AP shells did around 62,267. Our torpedoes did around 45,000. So overall, I am going to miss the Z-46. It has probably become one of my more favorite destroyers in a while, as far as the tier nine is concerned. Definitely a little bit more so than the Fletcher, but that's my opinion. Let's take a look at our stats in port. See you guys there. Alright everyone, welcome back to the port. And the Z46 has really become one of my most favorite tier 9 destroyers I've ever experienced. Um, I very much enjoy this ship. I've had a lot of fun with her. And I think she's very, very powerful and very well worth the grind up to her. And trust me, the lower tier German destroyers, they are downright stinkers and lemons. Granted, there are a few of them that are decent and can be decently good, uh, but overall, they are downright pain. But once you get up to the Z, about the Z-23 is when you start to kind of feel like you can actually do something about the battle. And once you get to the Z-46, oh, she is fantastic. All right, let's talk about the ship itself. Survivability. 23,050. Now keep in mind, I do run survivability expert on the ship, on my captain, and that will obviously allow you to be a little bit more tankier. And this ship really needs to be tanky. And that's generally even without survivability expert is fairly tanky as is, has the most amount of health in the tier nine destroyers. And with that, you can actually take a lot of damage, but there are obvious down, downsize of being this tanky she's actually kind of wide uh she's not the narrowest of ships she's not the fattest ship either uh but she can take uh cannot take battleship ap very very well and that's pretty much the downside of her is if you get hit by ap you feel it you feel it quite heavily and quite hard and i really wish um AP from battleships would not be as powerful as it can be. Uh, so moving on to artillery, she has three main guns and the C-46 is very, very similar to, I guess, how you could say like the Nuremberg, where the majority of your gun power is going to be in the rear section. This is very, very good thing for you because you can actually pull away and you still have the majority of your guns. Now, there's also one little nice thing about uh, the Z-23 is the gun arcs on this middle turret goes very far forward. So it does allow you to angle 
uh, somewhat slightly, especially against, say, destroyers that decide to fire AP, I guess. Um, but you are able to bring that middle turret uh, to the front to where you can actually use it. So you do have three dual 128 millimeters. They reload every four seconds. They have a turn time of 10 seconds. They have a range of 11 kilometers with a 97 meter max dispersion. The HE shells is very, very lackluster. I very rarely do HE. The only time would be if a destroyer is pulling away from you, showing the bow or the stern, well, preferably the stern. Um, so HE, very rarely would I recommend it. Max damage is 1500 with a 7.5% fire chance. The AP is really where it counts. 3000 max damage. And if a destroyer decides to show you broadside or even a battleship shows you broadside, you can deal good 3 or 4k. I've even had up to 6k damage with my AP. So trust your AP. Your AP is very fantastic. The only downside, obviously, is if it decides to turn away or angle away, your a your AP becomes null and void. So guns, fairly decent. It actually feels like they actually do travel now. They also have an 830 meter per second. Uh, I would not say they're as straight to target as, say, the Udaloy or the Tashkent, but they're still fairly decent at range. You will probably have to lead just a teensy bit more. Now, torpedoes, they are kind of hit and miss. They're good. Nice thing about them is they reload very, very quickly, 68.9 seconds. And if you have adrenaline rush that and you've taken a lot of damage, that even reloads more quickly than you would expect. So it's very nice to have adrenaline rush with the Z46. Uh, max damage, this is probably my most complaint about her is 14,400 very very lackluster say compared to the Fletcher max damage is 19,000 so 5,000 and it has two torpedo tubes with five so Fletcher definitely does have more potency with the torpedoes but with the Fletcher the reload time is significantly more almost double the amount of time 106 seconds versus 68 so you can get off at least two salvos compared to the Fletcher which does help you in the long run uh, range on the torpedoes is decent 10 kilometers while the Fletcher obviously is going to have a little bit more by 500 meters so overall torpedoes are pretty nice they go 67 knots Decent, fast for loading. That's the nice thing about them. Just wish they did a little bit more damage, but it is what it is. And as far as flooding, eh, most times I don't always see flooding, but maybe it's just due to the fact of the uh, torpedo belt on some ships. Moving on to AA guns, they're actually not that bad. Um, I'm not saying they're amazing, but they're decent. Average damage is 18 with a 2.4 kilometer range. They are three quintuple 20 millimeters. Then you have four dual 37 millimeters. Average damage is 41 with a 4.2 kilometer range. And then your main guns offer additional AA 45 average damage with a six kilometer range. Obviously the Fletcher is going to be a little bit better in that regards 25, 57 and 54, but still fairly decent. Uh, I do run the AA module on this ship, which does allow increased range uh, whenever dealing with anti-aircraft guns, but very rarely will I actually turn them on. Maneuverability. She's fairly quick. I do have the speed flag on her, so with that, 39.4, and with the speed boost, you're looking around 42 knots in a straight line. Uh, turning circle radius is kind of big, 670 meters versus the Fletcher at 560, and the Fletcher has a slightly better rudder shift time compared to the Z46 by 0.6 seconds, so rudder shift time for the Z46 is 3.6 seconds. So, yeah, granted, she's not the worst, but she's definitely not the best in those regards as far as turning circle radius or rudder shift time. Concealment is not bad. 
Um, probably my biggest complaint is her detect detectability range by air is 3.6, while the Fletcher has a 3.3, so a little bit tighter uh, with that additional 300 meters. But detectability range by sea is pretty decent, especially considering the uh, German destroyers had fairly large concealment uh, whenever facing off against USN or even the Japanese destroyers. Obviously, the Japanese destroyers had the best. Uh, detectability range by sea is 5.9. So, same detectability as tier 10 destroyers, which is very, very beneficial because if you run into them and they show you broadside, you can take them out. It, I've done it before. It's very fun. Um, but what really does help is... The consumables, let's actually talk about the consumables, is the Hydro. The Hydro is decent. The strip acquisition is 4.68 kilometers, while the torpedo is 3.27. It is active for 98 seconds. For low time, is 114, which is a tad bit slow. Uh, but if you do have your Hydro and they are within that 4 kilometer range, pop your smoke and just melt away their health with the hydro on the smoke and it does such a fantastic job highly recommend uh using this combination whenever possible moving on to the modules on the ship let's actually talk about what i've done now i have gone for main armaments mod one obviously that increases or reduces the chance of your main guns or torpedoes gaining damage uh, then AA Guns Mod 2 is the second one. I actually went for this just so I can get additional AA range just to help out uh, whenever having to deal with fighters. Third one, I went for tor Torpedo 2's Modification 3 just to increase the reload speed of the torpedoes because the torpedoes reload very, very quickly and want to try to help that out as much as possible. Now, the fourth skill, instead of Hydro, I actually have gone with Engine Boost Mod 1. This allows the action time of the Engine Boost to be a little bit longer, allows you to zip around, allows you to be more maneuverable with it than if you had Hydro. Hydro's not always the best thing in the world to have, it is great whenever you are pushing into cap but honestly having the longer duration on the energy boost is very very beneficial moving on to the fifth steering gears mod 2 is fantastic because once again it comes down to being maneuverable you want to be as survivable as possible and having steer steering gears mod 2 really allows you to dodge and weave as much as possible uh, next one obviously is concealment at mod one just reduce your detection even more very very nice to have now as far as upgrades i probably recommend getting the additional uh modification to your torpedoes because without it uh you just have a shorter duration or shorter range as well as a slightly slower torpedoes so go for torpedoes Go for Z46, the B-hole, and then go for the range. That is what I would recommend. That's kind of what I figure is probably going to be the best because this actually is very, very useful because without it, your rudder shift time is quite terrible. Five seconds. Well, not quite terrible, but it's definitely not as good as I would like it. So go for B-hole almost as soon as you can, but having those torpedoes is very nice to have. Last but not least is our captain. My captain is actually a 19 point captain. Finally, I've got him up to the 19 point. Starting off, priority target is once again one of my more favorite skills. Just allowing you to know who's aiming at you uh, is a very good thing to know when you need to pull away. Last stand, then go for superintendent so you have those extra charges and concealment expert. Uh, the additional skills, well, this one essentially came down to the fact of it was my last point and just increases your survivability of the ship. Uh, then Adrenaline Rush is fantastic. As you all know, the more health you lose, the faster your guns and torpedoes reload. And that gets very, very scary. Uh, torpedo Armament Expertise reduces the reload time on your torpedoes, which is fantastic once again. And then survivability expert just to buff your health pool even more so. But anyways, 
we are going to say goodbye to the Z46 and say hello to the Z52. And as always, I will once again, once again, say and will recommend this ship because she's actually really fun and really good in the right hands. But anyways, we are going to go say goodbye to the ship and move on. So thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jin.